Hey everybody, in today's video I'm going to show you how you can pull historical stock prices for a specific ticker and date. So let's say you wanted to, to know what a stock was priced at a month ago or at the start of last year. You know, you can do that in either Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel. I'll show you how you can do that and also comparing and contrasting the different methods to see which one's, which one's best for you. So in this example, I'm going to use Apple as my stock ticker. And I'm going to set it up so that way you can use this formula for other, other tickers and uh, other dates. And anytime you're looking at, at using dates in your formulas, it's always helpful to just have a date field just to enter it in. So it's a lot easier to make changes because if you're hard coding dates within, within a formula, it can be a bit difficult to uh, make changes later on. So let's say I want to pull um, Apple stock price for December 1, 2023. So I'm going to go back a month. And so Excel has a stock history function. So this is available if you've got Microsoft Office 365. Um, on older versions of Excel, you may not have it, so you may need to use something like, like Power Query to pull in uh, historical stock prices. So if you don't have a stock history function, um, that's why it's going to be only available on newer versions of Excel. But if you do have it, it's a, it's a handy function, makes it easy to pull pull in historical stock prices. So the main argument we've got is the stock, the stock ticker, and then the date. So the start date and end date is gonna be the same thing, for both arguments. The interval is going to be daily, of course, I've only selected one day anyways. I'm gonna select no headers, just because I just want the actual price. And you can select multiple properties. We've got, we've got date, close, open, high, low in the volume. So I'm just gonna get the closing price. So I'm gonna specify number one. And now it tells me that on December 1, 2023, Apple stock price was $191.24. So really easy uh, to, to pull that info without having to open up Yahoo Finance or whatever to find Apple's stock price. Now you could go back and say, okay, let's say I wanted to go back a year ago. Let's say we put January 1, 2023. Now the problem with this is that it's not a trading day because it's a holiday. So if we click on this area here, we see it says non-trading day. Now the one thing I don't like about the stock history function is it doesn't automatically bump you over to the next trading day. It just gives you an error. So the the problem here is obviously if you don't know off the top of your head, you know whether that certain day was um, uh, was let's say a weekend or it was a holiday you might get that error, so you may have to just keep on going, let's say January 2nd, 2023. Nope, still a value error. So let's say January 3rd, 2023. And there we go, we've got Apple stock price there. So that's the, that's the one um, disadvantage of using the stock history function. It doesn't automatically adjust that for you. So hopefully in, in a future version, it will do that. But right now, that's the, the main limitation. And another thing um, is that because, because it's a stock history function, um, you may not be able to count on this to get you um, the current current share price because um, until the day is over, obviously it's it's not going to be able to get you the, the current value. So you couldn't just enter the stock history function, enter today and get the current, um, current price if the markets are open. So you'd have to wait until it closes. And I'm not entirely sure at what point it updates or at, at what point it'll start. Uh, start working for the current trading day once the tra trading day is closed. So that's another thing of it. You can't get the current um, current stock price or the latest, especially if you want like that 15 minute delay or whatever the case may be. It's not going to be able to pull in that that info for you. So that's the one disadvantage. It's another disadvantage, I guess, of using the stock history function. So now let's flip, flip over to Google Sheets and show you how we can do that on pulling the stock prices on there. So now we're into Google Sheets and let's do the same thing. Let's set it up the same way. So we've got the stock as Apple, we've got the date, let's set it to December 1, 2023. And this time we're gonna use the Google Finance function, which obviously doesn't exist in uh, Microsoft Excel. So we're gonna select the ticker being Apple. Uh, the attribute is gonna be the price and the start date, December 1, 2023. Now, if we just close it out like this, it's actually gonna return a table. So in this case, if we just want the stock price, I'm gonna use the index function. And I want the second row and the second column, which is, give me that price right there. 
So this, this is always gonna work if we always return just that one date. So in this case, I just specified one argument for the date, December 1, 2023, and it returned that value for me. So easy enough, it's always gonna be in that second row, second column. Now, if I'm looking at a wider range, uh, date range, then obviously that's not going to work. Uh, you know, using the second row and second column is not gonna, gonna give me that exact same value. Now, let's say I, I go back to January 1, 2023. I enter this as, as my date. In this case, one of the cool things is Google Finance, it actually does automatically push to that, to that correct, uh, uh, correct working day, jumps to the next working day. Even though I've selected January 1st, it's still gonna gi give me the, the correct value. Now, if we compare, you know, this is that same price, 125.07, but in in Microsoft Excel, I had to specify January 3rd. If I typed in January 1st, remember it's giving me that value error. I actually have to select January 3rd. But with Google Sheets, the really cool thing is it doesn't matter. So even if I don't know the date or the working day, it's automatically gonna bump me into the correct one, which is what I would which is what I would expect it to do, because obviously there's a lot of holidays. You know, you're gonna have to remember weekends and that sort of stuff. So, Google Sheets in that sense uh, makes makes it a lot easier. Another really cool thing is that with Google Sheets, we can get the current stock price. So, if I just use the Google Finance function and select Apple and then type in price, and that's it, it's gonna give me the current stock price, right? I don't have to enter in today's data. I don't have to use the today function. I don't have to do anything special to tell it give me the latest stock price. So the Google Finance function, the ticker and that you want the price, that's enough. It'll give you the current um, the current stock price. So it's not gonna be up to the second, right? It's gonna have that delay of, I think about 15 minutes, but at, the, at least you're not gonna have to worry about when you're gonna be able to get that price. So this is the reason why um, if, you're, if you're looking at uh, creating a, a spreadsheet for to track, to track stock prices or you wanna track multiple tickers, uh, Google Sheets is your better option. That's usually what I tell people is if they, if they want to track multiple tickers, Google Sheets is going to be the, the, the best way to do so just because, as you can imagine, you can type in multiple stocks. Let's see, we've got Apple, uh, Microsoft, Google. Right? What we could just do is use the Google Finance function and say, okay, select that ticker, price, right? And then we can copy it down. And it becomes really easy to pull out all these stock prices without having to you know, worry about whether we've got the date right, whether the trading day is closed. So Google Sheets is a lot better in that sense and be able to pull, pull in multiple stock prices, getting them uh, quicker, uh, getting them on, on the current day, and you know, have it, having the ability to you know, adjust your formula to, to go to the next trading day if you've entered in a date that doesn't correspond with the day that the markets were open. So although you can pull the stock prices on both Google Sheets and Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets is definitely the better option, the more easier one to, to track that sort of info in, just because the Google Finance function is a lot easier to use. And um, you know, as of right now, you know, it's definitely the, the easier one to set up without having to worry about whether you got the right date, whether the trading is closed. And so if you're, if you're looking to create a spreadsheet to track stock prices, Google Sheets is your better option. So over time, this might change, but for now, that's the, that's the best option if you want to create a stock trading uh, spreadsheet. So thanks for watching and hope you like this video.